So I'll do something like, I don't know, 246 times 3. Oh, Remember the, the kind of goal of this whole chip model process. For addition and subtraction, the goal of chip models was to explain the algorithms, right? And if you recall, everything we did on the chip model for addition it can be repeated over on the addition algorithm. Everything we did with the subtraction chip model has its place over in the subtraction algorithm. So we want the exact same thing to happen with multiplication. Okay? So again, you're going to start by drawing your model. And the model is going to look you know, kind of the same as it did for addition and subtraction. We need three place values, ones, tens, and hundreds. And now we're using this new idea that multiplication by three is exactly the same as three rows of 246. So we are thinking of 246 times three as three rows of 246. And that's exactly what we did yesterday with that base five problem. So 246, of course, is two hundreds, four tens, and six ones. And we're just going to have three exact rows of this. Now, I know I kind of poke fun at my college students quite a bit, but you know, they're good for the most part. I need to get that on camera. Um, but <laughs> again, sometimes they think they're a little cleverer than they are. And they'll just throw a bunch of chips on this model and end up, because they're just so focused on the right answer. So they'll just throw a bunch of chips haphazardly on this model. They'll get the right number coming out, but what they've drawn, if you just throw a bunch of chips haphazardly on the model, doesn't illustrate multiplication. Multiplication is illustrated by the fact that you have three rows of 246. In fact, this model is showing all sorts of stuff, right? What else can you see on this model kind of tied in with multiplication? What's the definition of multiplication? You see that anywhere? 246 plus 246 plus 246, right? We actually see, I mean, this is 200 times 3. This is 40 times 3, isn't it? Because it's 4 tens, so it's 40 times 3. And this is 6 times 3, is it not? So the distributive property, the key component of the algorithm is illustrated on this model. Yeah, there's a ton going on in this model, so it's very rich. And again, we don't even have to talk algorithm in order to solve this problem, right? Once we realize that 246 times 3 is simply 3 rows of 246, then we just compose tens like we did yesterday, right? We have, there's 10 ones. 10 ones becomes 110, right? There's another 10 ones. 10 ones becomes 110. And you just count chips to get your answer, right? Looks like it should be 738. Of course, our goal with this model is can we translate all of the steps we did with the model over to the most efficient algorithm? Because again, of course, when your students run into a multiplication problem in later grades, you don't want them breaking out a chip model to solve the problem you need them to be able to use the most efficient way of solving the problem, which is the algorithm. So just like we did yesterday, we are going to ask ourselves, was all of this business really necessary to solve this problem? Meaning, drawing the entire model, drawing all the little chips, was that necessary to solve this problem? Or can we just kind of cut through all of the extra pictures and ask ourselves, what did we do mathematically here, and then just do it over here? Of course we can. What was the first thing we did mathematically? We took six ones, we multiplied it by three, right? Six times three gives us our 18. And then of course we realized that 18 is 110. That's why a one goes in the tens place. And eight ones, and that's why an eight goes in the ones place. Our next step, this is a complicated step, and I think we talked about this a little bit yesterday. With if there's no context attached to this next step, if you're just pulling someone off the street that's never seen this before and telling them, okay, in this next step, be really careful, these numbers get multiplied and this one gets added. That seems like a very arbitrary thing. 
I mean, why not add and multiply, or multiply and add, or add and multiply, right? I mean, there's a lot of ways to screw that up if you're just relying on memorization, add and multiply. Well, if you look at the diagram, the model, it's obvious why 3 times 4 is multiplied and 1 is added. So we started with 4 tenths, so we multiplied that by 3. There's your 3 times 4. And we had to add that additional 10 that we just got in from the 1s. Right? So it's obvious from the picture that it's multiply and then add. For a grand total of 13 tenths, again, 13 tenths is 10 tenths, which is 1 100 with three tens left over. And then again, we have that same step coming up, multiply and then add. Well, why is it that order? Why isn't it add and then multiply or any of the other combinations? Well, because we started with 200, we multiplied that by three, then we need to add that one extra 100 we just got in. So that's why it's two times three plus one. Or So the only really new thing here was thinking of multiplication as rows of. Okay? This is why models are so useful, and I think we talked about this the other day, is for a lot of different types of problems, you can kind of choose an interpretation or a model that really clearly illustrates what you're talking about. We did this with, um, with the subtraction <coughs> chip model. It really helped for us to think of it as takeaway, as subtraction being takeaway. And when we thought about subtraction as takeaway, we're crossing off chips, it made perfect sense. Okay. It helps to think of multiplication in this context as rectangular array, rows up. Okay. 